Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Klein, co-founder and CEO at Riskalyze. Welcome to the May 2022 edition of the FinTech 5, a collaboration with our friends at wealthmanagement.com. Can't keep tabs on every FinTech headline that breaks every day? No problem. Our team does it for you. Here are the five top stories you need to know. We'll start today's video with a huge congratulations to the Onyx Advisor Network, which officially launched this month a new support network and learning platform for underrepresented advisors. Launched by advisors Desarte Yarnway and Emlyn Miles Mattingly, there are two important trends to note here. One is the continued rise of professional networks for advisors who want to learn from each other. And another is the effort to increase the diversity of our profession. People tend to build trust more rapidly with people who look and sound like themselves. And if we're going to truly serve our diverse world, we need more advisors who look and sound like all of our potential clients. In recent acquisition news, it looks like advisor websites are about to get a little bit snappier. Snappy Kraken kicked off its first annual Jolt conference by announcing it was acquiring advisor websites, effectively doubling its team and its client base. Now, as a board member at Snappy, it's so exciting to see the powerful combination of marketing automation via email and social media, text messaging conversations with clients, and compliant website infrastructure. I couldn't be more excited about the opportunities this deal creates for advisors to supercharge their marketing. Big congrats to Robert Sophia, Graham Thomas, and this newly combined team. In alternative news, Case continues to make waves as it extends its alternative investments platform into more high-powered partnerships. The firm announced it would be bringing a custom version of its platform to advisor groups, 10,000 plus advisors. If you've been a regular here at the FinTech 5, you know that the alt space is one that is heating up. Between iCapital, Gridline, First Trust, and new startups I hear of all the time, giving advisors and their clients access to more than just stocks and bonds is garnering a lot of attention. Are you Zoomed out? If so, you're not alone, and the record-breaking attendance at spring advisor conferences is an indicator that while COVID is here to stay, advisors are kind of overstaying inside because of it. Joel Brookenstein's T3 event returned with about 1,000 attendees between the technology vendors and the advisors in attendance, plus the release of the 2022 T3 Advisor Technology Survey results, which takes stock of market leaders across all the advisor tech categories. It's so great to have you back, T3. Today's last story is all about what else? Crypto. Well, it might not be great timing with most crypto markets down 50% or more in the last several weeks. Fidelity continued to assert itself at the forefront of blockchain innovation with the announcement that they will support crypto in retirement accounts. Senator Elizabeth Warren, who has never met a financial services announcement she hasn't wanted to regulate, pounced on this immediately, firing off a strongly worded letter to Fidelity, questioning whether they were being prudent with this move. Now, it turns out the good senator has a deep misunderstanding of all this because Fidelity doesn't typically serve as the fiduciary to these plans. It's the advisor on the plans that will make the decision as to whether to incorporate the volatile asset class or not. Rest assured, Senator, we'll still be here to make sure those advisors know that it's a risk 99 move. That's your FinTech 5 for May. Stay tuned on wealthmanagement.com for all the news you need to know. I'm Aaron Klein, and we'll see you next month.